approximately 12 miles to the southwest of Fillmore, Utah. You'll find a broad lava flow field carpeted in yellow cheatgrass that's found its home nestled into the cracks and caverns of the vesicular basalt that spilled onto the valley floor from the mantle beneath it. Frozen in place to remain until the winds and streams have carried it away, this 400,000 year old lava flow is the result of a mafic volcanic eruption from the tabernacle crater at its center. Within this field, you'll find the Tabernacle Hill lava tubes. A lava tube, or pyroduct, is a natural conduit formed by flowing lava from a volcanic vent that moves beneath the hardened surface of a lava flow. If lava in the tube empties, it leaves behind a long and winding cave. Lava tubes can be up to 15 meters wide, though are often narrower and run anywhere from 1 to 15 meters below the surface. The lava tubes, which extend for hundreds of yards, formed as the surface of lava streams cooled, solidified, and crusted over. The subterranean lava then vacated the tubes as the supply of lava diminished, leaving behind empty conduits. The central tuff ring, from which the Tabernacle Hill gets its name, is a type of volcanic cone made of ash and grittier fragments, created by explosive eruptions caused by the interaction of basaltic magma and shallow water. Two-thirds of Tabernacle Hill's original 3,000-foot diameter cone remains. The northwest side has been obliterated by eruptions. The central caldera within the tuff ring is surfaced with pressure ridges and domes, which are elliptical mounds that commonly split lengthwise along their crest as molten lava pushes upward on the solidified crust of the flow. Welcome to the lava tubes. Within the lava tubes you'll find the step mark, which is essentially the high flow mark of the lava that once streamed within these tubes. Some less common formations within the lava tubes are lava pillars, lava sickles, and lava stalactites. Navigating the lava tubes with a cumbersome backpack filled with camera equipment was a bit of an ordeal, but I managed to sneak through some pretty tight gaps and cracks. For those of you that want to explore the lava tubes, be aware that the ceilings are low and eroding. There are rock fall hazards that come with walking inside of the lava tubes. The surfaces of the vesicular basalt that compose the lava flow are abrasive, so shorts aren't advised for those that want to explore the deeper reaches of the tubes. Temperatures reached 107 degrees Fahrenheit while we were there, so bring lots of water to drink and wear sunscreen. My Irish jeans had me sunburnt within 10 minutes of stepping outside of my car. Inside of the lava tubes are various formations such as volcanic pipes and shafts, as well as geothermal conduits where water was trapped by the flowing lava and evaporated, causing large air pockets and openings within the rock. The ceilings of some of the tubes have collapsed from weathering and created large rifts and canyons to explore. These make great bouldering obstacles for children and mildly out of shape adults to enjoy scrambling over. These can be fairly easily accessed from the top of the lava flow, but use caution with small children. The openings are as deep as 50 feet in some places and are difficult to spot until you approach them. Scattered throughout the lava field are abrupt openings that can drop 20 feet or more into the lava tubes that are difficult to access. 
While incredible to look at, use caution to avoid stepping into one of these. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my other videos ranging from homesteading to exploring mines to camping. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this with your friends if you can. Consider becoming a patron to help me continue producing videos like this. Until then, we'll see you next time.